Okay, here we have the supposed five fundamentals of uh, what makes up a fundamentalist. It says, number one, inerrancy of the scriptures. If you believe the Bible's in error, then how can you say that you're saved from the scriptures? You can't. You have to believe in the inerrancy of scriptures. Number two, the virgin birth and deity of Jesus. If you don't believe in the virgin birth and the deity of Jesus, you can't be saved. Number three, the doctrine, doctrine of substitutionary atonement by God's grace and through human faith. Okay, and of course, look, they're, they're given NIV things here. This is just Wikipedia. I don't recommend them for a lot of things. But uh, <clears throat> the point is, if you don't, well, let's go on to the next one here. I'll get back to that in a minute. You have to believe in Jesus' death on the cross as payment for your sins to be saved. Okay, and that, that's by grace through faith. All right, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. The bodily resurrection of Jesus. Okay, if you don't believe Jesus came up from the dead, then you're not saved. The authenticity of Christ's miracles. Okay, and then it talks about premillennial, second coming, uh, healing, deliverance, you know, the miracles that were mentioned in the Gospels. So let me just go over this again. If you don't believe in the inerrancy of scriptures, if you don't believe in the virgin birth and deity of Jesus, the doctrine of substitutionary atonement by the blood of Jesus Christ, the bodily resurrection of Jesus, and Christ's miracles. If you do not believe in those five things, you're not saved. I, okay, you, you don't even try arguing with me. These are not, oh, you, know, you have to be a fundamentalist. That, that isn't it. This is just good common sense. This is what the scripture teaches. And if you don't believe that, you're lost. So, why would the NIV people make this into an issue? Oh, the fundamentalists. Oh, the, the funda uh, fundamentalists, according to those five fundamentals, these are Christians. If you're not, if you don't believe in those five fundamentals, you're not saved. Period. Okay, you cannot deny the inerrancy of the scriptures, the virgin birth of Jesus, the substitutionary atonement, the resurrection of Jesus and the miracles. You can't, you can't deny those things and be a Christian. Just ridiculous. But anyhow, here, let's continue. It says, the successful publication of the African-American devotional Bible in the fall of 1997 and the collegiate devotional Bible in mid-1998. So there's your two people that they went after there, the African-Americans and the college kids. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a demographic, as they say here in this article. It says, at the dawn of the 21st century, Zonder Kids gained recognition and market share for its age-appropriate Bibles, including the NIRV New Kids Edition. Okay? Uh, the aftermath of the terrorist attacks in September 2001 caused a surge in sales for Bibles. Oh, boy. Make some money off of that, man. Don't let a good crisis go to waste. And inspirational titles. Zondervan finished the year with revenues of $165 million with its NIV editions accounting for a major chunk of its sales. Oh, man, yeah. Again, where's God at in there? Where is, hey, the Lord really blessed us? Or, it's not there. It's just secular, all secular. Zondervan scored several coups in 2002. Okay? The wildly popular Veggie Tales. Again, I, like I said, I'll get into that more later. Publishing Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life, Mr. CFR. And then here it says, The Purpose Driven Life was to adults what the Veggie Tales phenomenon was to kids with Zondervan cashing in on both. <laughs> yeah. It's about money, people. Get it figured out. By 2003, Zondervan continued to ride high with The Purpose Driven Life, which had sold 100,000 copies in a matter of months. Good money there. The Inspirio, Inspirio, however you say that, marketed, marketed. Zondervan did, however, run into controversy with today's new international version. It's gender neutral. It's a feminist Bible, okay? Look at my collation at my website, and you can see proof they removed the word man over 1,700 times. It's feminist, okay? But anyhow, it says, which had been resurrected despite running afoul of fundamentalists. There's the word again. Uh, Christians. If you're not a fundamentalist, if you don't believe in the five fundamentals, you're lost. Zondervan believed the translation mirrored societal changes and would appeal to the 18 to 34 year old demographic. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thus, Zondervan turned to mass merchandisers. Mass merchandisers, including 
Walmart, Kmart, and Target for distribution to market the progressive TNIV. Yeah. Okay. And then it says here about how that it was uh, also, you know, more traditional products such as uh, Ann Graham, daughter of Billy Graham, another faker. Uh, but anyhow, it says partnered. they also partnered with Mel Gibson to handle DVD and VHS sales of his hit movie, The Passion of the Christ, to Christian markets. 20th Century Fox handled non-religious sales. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing how we can all work together now? Roman Catholics and, and secular people, 20th Century Fox, you know, they put out porn and, and all kinds of filth, but oh, we'll work with them to make money. Yeah. The purpose-driven life had sold more than 15 million copies worldwide. Well, that's good, good money there. Propelling Zondervan's sales and in turn accounting for 15% of parent company HarperCollins reviews. Or, I'm sorry, revenues. Revenues, not reviews. Reviews don't make you money. Revenues do. Then down here it says, in... Oh, I'm sorry. I missed my little arrow there. In January 2005, Zondervan was once again in the news with its TNIV after initiating a $1 million advertising campaign. Hmm. Spent a million bucks to advertise the thing. It sounds secular to me. And approaching Rolling Stone magazine with the, an ad for the hip Bible. Yeah, well, that's scriptural. Let's make the Bible hip. Yeah. Rolling Stone, Long the Bastion for free speech and often outrageous content refused the ad believing its audience would not appreciate a Bible advertisement. News of the refusal sent shockwaves throughout the magazine's readership and beyond. As Rolling Stone faced angry readers and advertisers, Zondervan benefited from new, numerous publications clamoring to show their political correctness and carry ads for the TNIV. In the end, Rolling Stone caved and Zondervan had a plethora of media outlets for the controversial TNIV. Other Zondervan hits during the year included a glossy new edition of the NIV for women that looked more like an issue of glamour or vogue, and Rick Warren's still popular The Purpose Driven Life, which remain on both the Christian and mainstream bestseller lists. What is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Think about the scriptures. Into the 21st century, Zondervan continued to rule the Bible segment for Christian publishing, putting out Bibles tailored to the evolving needs of its readers. Bibles came in all shapes and sizes, from traditional leather bindings to neon or flower printed soft covers, it says on the next page. That's basically it for the article.